This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Hobby Boss's Fitter, IBG's Pioneer, Zvezda's IL-76, and Thunder Model's first Hetzer. This episode of New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, the source for all your workbench storage needs. Welcome to the New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly expose of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's kick things off with Hobby Boss's 148 scale SU-17 M4 Fitter K. A variable geometry development of Sequoia's SU-7, the 17 still serves in many nations' air forces. It's been the subject of just a couple of 148 scale kits, including the recent Kitty Hawk offering. Let's see how Hobby Boss handled it. Marked by fine recessed panel lines, the fuselage comes in full length halves. They include much of the fitter's prominent spine. The inner fixed sections of the wings have thin reinforcing strips and separate fences that fit into slots. The one piece horizontal stabilizers are keyed for alignment and can't be posed without modification. Optional outer wing sections allow for the plane to be posed fully swept or fully extended for landing. Both versions attach to the inner wings with a butt join and small locator pins. The ailerons are separate on both options and the leading edge slats are separate and extended on the forward swept version. The vertical stabilizer halves incorporate the rest of the spine and the rudder is molded in place. The cockpit tub includes floor details and side consoles with molded controls. A neat feature is the inclusion of the canopy's internal frame as a separate part. The balance of the cockpit detail includes an ejection seat that looks like the later K36 rather than the KS4 used on early SU-17s. It does have a molded harness. There is also a rear bulkhead, sidewall inserts with decal details, instrument panel with molded details, a shroud, and decal dials. The fuselage halves also sandwich a jet pipe with internal details. Many of the external vents and intakes are separate. In addition to crisp pitots and probes, the nose has a three-part intake cone with splitters top and bottom. The other end features a detailed exhaust nozzle. And for added display pizzazz, the kit includes a tow bar with wheels and braces. The aircraft's tires are separate and molded in vinyl. Clear plastic includes the lights, HUD glass, canopy, and windshield. The shape of the last seems a bit anemic to my eye. Photo Edge Metal provides probes, antennas, and other details. The kit includes a nice choice of stores, including four fuel tanks and two R60 MK missiles, and 100, 250, and 500 pound bombs. There are also two S-24 missiles and a pair each of B-8M and B-13L rocket pods. Decals provide markings for two Russian Air Force fitters, one in Germany in 1994 and the other in Afghanistan in the late 1980s, although the instructions say 1998. This is a decent looking kit with nice detail and it should be a relatively easy build. Turning to vehicles, we have IBG's 135th scale Scammel Pioneer. First delivered to the British Army in the mid-1930s, the heavy breakdown trucks served British and Commonwealth forces in North Africa and Europe throughout World War II. Several of the more than 3,400 built were sent to the Soviet Union as part of the Lend-Lease program. This 4x6 truck could tow nearly 20 tons. IBG's all-new 135th scale Pioneer includes a detailed engine with a two-part block, intake and exhaust manifolds, and more. The power plant sits at the front of a multi-part chassis with nicely molded braces on the rails and cross members. The drivetrain extends through a transfer case with power takeoff for the recovery gear to end between a pair of heavy leaf springs, where it meets the heavy duty differential. That's connected to walking beam suspension units for the powered rear wheels. Those attach to the wheel center hubs. Which in turn fit into the multi-part wheels which have sidewalls with complete markings and sharply molded separate treads. Up front sits the non-posable front wheels a very detailed radiator with hood and engine hatches, and the counterweight rack used on the real vehicle to keep the nose down. The cab builds from a floor, roof, walls, and firewall with windshield. The doors cannot be posed open, but there's detail molded on both inner and outer faces. Seats, controls, and rifles detail the interior. Clear parts fill the windshield, side windows, headlights, and rear wall. The bed has wood texture molded on the floor. Toolboxes and other fittings which sandwich the recovery gear. The last includes the supports, extending arm, and winch. Photo Etch Brass provides seat back supports, a prominent stowage rack under the driver's door, engine fan, instrument panel, manufacturer's plate on the winch, and more. Color painting diagrams and tech mod decals provide markings for five World War II pioneers, one each in Polish, South African, British, Soviet, and German service. By itself, the Pioneer is an interesting vehicle and the model has lots of diorama potential. Should be fun. Next, something I'm excited to see is Vezda's 1 to 1 4 4 scale IL-76. Known to NATO as the Candid, Aleutian's heavy lifters served the Russian and Soviet air forces as well as commercial cargo carriers since the mid-1970s. 
As boxed, this kit represents the military MD variant with a tail gun, but the civilian tail is on the trees. Typical as Vesda's recent 1 to 144 scale kits, the fuselage halves show fine, fine recessed panel lines. Windows and doors are separate. Check out the nice rudder hinges. The same attention to detail transfers to the wings with numerous access hatches top and bottom. This kit falls under Zvezda's ultimate kit brand with optional parts to pose the separate flaps and leading edge slats either stowed or extended, including optional flap actuators. The engines come with detailed pods and integrated pylons, front and rear faces, and one-piece intake lips and exhaust nozzles. And the landing gear is crisp and well detailed for the scale. Ultimate kit also means interior detail. In addition to the cockpit with floor, seats, walls and instrument panel. There's a full cargo bay with detailed floor and nose position, bulkhead, walls, ceiling, and posable loading ramp. Clear plastic supplies the cockpit windshield, lower nose glass for the navigator's position, tail gun windows, and cargo bay portholes. Decals provide markings for three Russian Air Force IL-76s. More than 900 IL-76s were built and they continue to serve around the world. I can't wait to add a commercial version to my airliner collection. Finally, we have Fender Models 135th scale Burger Panzer 38T. More than 100 of this Hetzer based recovery vehicle were built for the German Army between September and December 1944. A few dozen more were converted from Hetzer tank destroyers. The vehicle was equipped with a folding jib crane capable of lifting two tons and useful for hoisting engines and other vehicle components. Two versions of this kit are available from Thunder Models. The limited edition bonus kit comes with an engine compartment as well as photo etch, mud guards, and Schurzen. This is the standard version of the kit without those bonuses. The hull comprises lower and upper halves with molded rivets, crisp fenders with detailed top and bottom, and weld seams. This version's styrene shirts are molded with attachment points, rivets, and beveled edges for a scale-thin appearance. The distinctive 38T suspension starts with the bogey supports for the hull, as well as the idler supports and final drives. The remainder of the bogies consist of inverted leaf springs and road wheel arms. The road wheels show nice rivet, hub, and tire details. Similar features mark the halves of the dry sprockets and idlers. Lincoln length tracks finish the running gear and feature sag in the upper runs. The Burger Panzer's open top means the interior is on display, starting with the transmission and driver's position with seat, controls and instrument panel with color photo etched dials. The recovery crane can be built stowed or raised and includes the winch run by power takeoff from the transmission as well as controls and the hook. A dozer blade mounts on the rear plate and includes supports and brackets with plenty of fine detail. It can be posed stowed or lowered. Photo-etched brass and copper supplies engine grills, controls, supports, brackets, and wing nuts. Wire, chain, and thread rig the crane and blade. No decals are included, but painting instructions show two late-war camouflage patterns for the Burger Panzer with color callouts for ammo of MIG Jimenez paints. Hetzer kits have always been popular, and this one puts a different spin on things. Look for reviews of the Fitter, Pioneer, IL-76, and Hetzer in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can always find new products in the July issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner.